Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of AFR's EMS uh, case studies. My name is Chris Ortiz. I'm the EMS Division Chief for Albuquerque Fire Rescue. And today I'm joined by Captain Kyle Christian and also driver Garrett Stash. Thank you, Chief. Thank you guys for joining us. So a very interesting call. You guys were both assigned to Rescue 12. Um, and it was AS and yourselves dispatched to, to Charlie. Uh, it's for a 67-year-old male complaining of an allergic reaction. Uh, talk to us a little bit about some of the dispatch information that you got and some of the things that are going through your mind uh, when you're on that, on your way to that call. Yep, definitely. So um, I actually kind of one of the more interesting parts about uh, bringing this case to you guys was that um, I, I was actually on the engine for this call. Um, I, I, w I wasn't the officer on the truck, but we had, uh, we had one of those awesome moments that you have in the station where you come back, you tell the crew, like, hey, we just had a really cool call, like, kind of tell them what was going through your head, you know what I mean? Um, feel feel really proud, you know, like, hey, I really helped somebody. Just want to share, you know, your accomplishment. And uh, and we had kind of like a realization moment when, when both trucks kind of came together, talked about some signs and symptoms that these guys on the rescue saw and seen. And we were able to kind of think through it and be like, I've never had a call like that before. Like, that's something you get taught and, uh, and, and hardly ever see. But it was like a really cool experience that I thought would be great to bring to everybody. So that's why I kind of prompted, uh, you know, Garrett to come on and talk about his call. I think he'd be the, the authority on this one. There's no sure. better place for education and for solving all the world's problems than being at the kitchen table in a fire station. Oh, yeah. Stand Absolutely. by that. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, Garrett, you tell me then. So you guys arrived on that scene. And tell us what you saw, what you found. Yeah, so we arrived on the scene. It was normal day, sunny outside. Um, you know, we pull up into the neighborhood, um, wife outside, kind of frantic. You know, so we get our bags, we go inside. Um, she's saying that her husband's, he's in the toilet. Uh, he was working outside um, in the backyard, and um, now he's like uncontrolled uh, diarrhea, vomiting. He's uh, really diaphoretic. And so we get over to him. Um, like I said, he's sitting on the toilet, and just like exactly how she explained it was, you know, actively diarrhea, vomiting, um, uh, secretions coming out of his nose. He was crying. He was, um, you know, slouched over. He wasn't, he was responsive, but he was definitely, he was hurting, you know. And so uh, we get, I get into him mm -hmm. and I um, kind of initially get a full set of vitals um, just right off the bat. And one thing I noticed right away, he was super Brady. Um, I don't remember his exact um, heart rate, but I know it was Brady and he was hypotensive. And so, you know, that kind of cueing in the fact that <clears throat> he's hypotensive, the GI stuff. He also, you know, once I exposed him a little bit, I noticed he had uticaria that was kind of coming up from his torso onto his neck and swelling in his mouth. He was saying that he was kind of starting to have trouble to breathe a little bit. And, you know, if I could just slow down for just a second, we got out of him just a little bit of information as far as like, working outside, fertilizer, um, garden, stuff like that. And so initially for me, what I was thinking was like, okay, this is definitely like an anaphylactic uh, reaction to, I mean, who knows what, it could just been the grass or something, or I, what I was really thinking was like a bee sting or something in that case. And being that he was hypotensive, uh, Brady, um, I went right for Epi. And so I just, his, yeah, he was already on the toilet, leg was exposed. I hit him with the epi right off the bat, um, got a line, put him on oxygen, you know, capped him, all that stuff. And, um, yeah. you know, once, I think it took a second for 5-5 to get there. Once they got there, um, I think we eventually got Benadryl on board. We ended up hitting this guy total with three epis um, by the time we were ready to move. So great job thinking that through. I think with the anaphylaxis, we went to that as our first course of treatment. And I think that was truly the lifesaver for him. And we yeah. know that... Anytime we have the two systems involved, right? You had the uticaria, you yep. also had the diarrhea, the GI stuff is happening. So you knew that there was two systems. This is probably anaphylaxis. So we went to the epi. Um, you started with the other adjunct treatments, IV fluid. You said the Benadryl, Dex. Um, Dex, yep. yep. Yeah. And did he seem to have uh, a response to that? Did he seem like he was doing better after that course of treatment? I want to say like maybe after the second epi is whenever he started kind of um, his blood pressure started increasing and then he I you know at that point he got a little tacky um um and then from there he was able to you know kind of calm down and be able to tell us a little more what was going on still at that point I was still thinking anaphylaxis and I was like wow you know we definitely got to get this guy going um at no point did I think that it would be like a organic phosphate type 
situation, you know, yeah. until after, like, like uh, Cap was saying, we got back to the station and he's like, well, he was, you know, he was, you know, crying. He was, you know, snot coming out of his nose, diarrhea, throwing up, you know, all this. He's like, oh, like sludge him. And I was like, wow, I guess yeah, now that you say that, it makes sense, you know, but. My thought process when you were describing the scene was right in line yeah. um, with what you thought. I would have thought probably a beast. At first, would have oh, thought yeah. maybe dehydration. Maybe he's been out there working too long. And then yeah. when you see his presentation, you see the two systems. I would have thought bitten by a bug, stung by a bee, something like that. So they get back to the station. They start to talk about the call after the fact. And you had some some great pearls as far as the the sludge symptoms. Talk to us about that. Hundred percent. So yeah. No, I mean they they killed it on scene. I mean they you know they they kind of told us the patient's presentation. They told us the treatment. It all made sense. The patient got better. Um, you know, especially talking to you, talking to Doctor Prude. It, it's funny, right? Um, it took me a second to kind of take a step back, and he's describing these symptoms to me. I was like, "Oh, that's sludge and like it's an organophosphate poisoning. Like, this is kind of what you hear about in like every EMT basic classroom." And I, I really challenged like anyone out there. I, I hadn't seen it before. You know, I, I, you hear about it. You do it in a classroom setting, and it's something we rarely see. So I was like, "Oh man, like, you know, like, like they missed the big picture, but." Not at all, man. Like, you know, like the life threat got treated. This was an anaphylactic reaction. Right. Um, but kind of just like adding to that, it was, uh, it took time and talking through it. And it took like multiple perspectives kind of be like to really build that full picture of like, oh, like now we kind of know what the antigen is. Like we, we know what was really causing those symptoms or we have a better idea. We have a, a better guess. Um, but no, I mean, you, you, you guys crushed it by, you know, treating those, the, the killer bees like Dr. Pruitt was talking to us about the bradycardia, bradypnea. Uh, the bronchorrhea, all three of those things are really, really affecting that um, the airway system. We just have those GI complaints. It's a it's a two system or a two systems affected. Then like amazing treatment with just epi 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 until they get better. Yeah, yeah. and it uh, truly was the life saving. That's that's yeah. what did it. So 100%. I'm going to put you on the spot. Like Please. your thought process would be in hindsight, kind of knowing what we know now. Uh, we talked about they had the fertilizers, so most likely the organophosphate um, treatment wise. What would you encourage um, our folks to look for, and what would that treatment be? Sure. So I think the really, really the only um, difference in the treatment at that point would have just been the addition of um, of the atropine, of IV atropine. You guys, you guys, um, you know, gave him gave him the oxygen he needed. You you gave him the the epi that was able to raise that heart rate, raise that blood pressure to uh, to really be that sympathomimetic to to help his body kind of fight that that uh, allergic reaction. Um, we cleared the secretions with that Benadryl. We kind of helped to kind of dry him out a little bit with that. Um, the only thing that we could really add to that would be um, that IV atropine. And it's, it's a, it's a big dose of atropine. We're used to giving it a little bit for bradycardia, but this is kind of that other, um, related use, um, that, that we hardly ever touch that's been in our protocols that we kind of yeah. remind people about. But man, like I kind of like I was telling you guys, I, I have never seen this. I have, I've never given that dose of atropine. Um, but that's how we're really going to treat, um, really dry up a lot of those secretions, make the patient more comfortable, kind of stop a lot of that, like, uh, kind of like that vagal response from all of the, um, all of like the, uh, secretions you know in in their throat in their nose um really just make them comfortable calm them down a little bit um you you guys crushed it i mean really like the the life-threatening treatment happened it was kind of like the the secondary comfort care i think is is really what that atropine would have been in the end just kind of like that nice supplemental push to to keep them on the right track yeah so. and like you know going back to that call at like no, at no point did that run through my mind. Like, yeah. oh, this is going to be, you know, where's the atropine? And so, um, for yeah, you know, I think when you're like on a scene and it's like a spur of moment, you're going to support vitals and whatever that is to do. Like, that's like you know our job is supporting vitals and something's low, something's high. You know, you do what you can to fix them and make you know the overall scene better. So, but it definitely was like eye opening to be like, okay, maybe take a second yeah. and like look and be like, oh, this could be this or whatever it is, you know. Did you guys end up riding in with Ambicure Ambulance or did uh, they transport alone? They ended up transporting alone. So by the time that um, they got there, we kind of got him all packaged up and got him on the gurney. He was still pretty weak, but I want to say his blood pressure came up to, you know, 130 over palp and he said he was, tach he was tachycardic and uh, not super like, you know, 110 or so. Um, at that point, he was, he was stable. And so... Um, <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, I feel like uh, majority of the work was already done at that point and get him down to the hospital. They felt comfortable riding in solo, but we did. We gave him the option to like, you guys need a rider. They're like, no, we're good. So 
All right, so in medicine, it's always there, there's always things that we catch that we could have done differently or done better. You guys did a fantastic job of treating the life threats. We talked about um, kind of exploring the the sludge and the organophosphate stuff. Just for um, other providers who encounter a call like this, what would it, what advice would you give to kind of take the totality of that scene in into account, and how would you change it if you were to go back today? Sure. Um, I think maybe just take like I was saying, taking that second of looking at the overall picture and like realizing that okay yes the two sis the two systems are being attacked like for the anaphylactic right he had the gi he had the uticaria he had the swelling of the airway but there was also more going on and so maybe just taking a second um doing initial treatment to support those vitals but maybe going back and being like okay well this guy you know he had secretions pretty much coming from anywhere or from everywhere you know he was outside well, what were you outside with? Maybe take a second to go look. Oh, it's fertilizer. And then, you know, ding, ding, ding. Maybe, you know, just taking that second, I think, is really what would, would help. So, And one of the resources we always have at our fingertips, uh, who's always happy to help, yeah. is poison control, too. So there's going to be a lot of times when we encounter substances or we either ingest or inhale that we have no idea what they are, right? And there's no guideline that really matches exactly what we're yeah. finding. Um, so I think reaching out to poison control and just having them help manage some of these exposures is always key. We always love to plug that number. It's the one 800 Two 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 one two two two. So make sure we have that in all the apparatus phones. Um, I know I've used it multiple times for my kiddos when they get their hands on something. You're like, oh, geez. But they've given us great advice, um, and they're able to help us in our course of treatment. So that's just another uh, another tool in our toolbox. So yeah. great job overall. Fantastic call. I appreciate you guys taking the time to share it with us. Uh, it's sure. definitely a rarity. We've talked about it since paramedic school and probably haven't talked about it since. Yeah. Um, and it is always the guy working out in the field and he was a farmer and we don't have a lot of that in the metro. So yeah, it was yeah. a unique case. So great yeah. job. Uh, well, that's it for today. If anybody has any interesting cases such as this, feel free to use the SharePoint tab or reach out to the EMS division and come and talk about it. So thank you, gents. I appreciate you. Until then, we'll see you next time. I'll meet you. Thank you.